the next series that you did, in Louis Meets, became was even more popular and broke through in a way that was um, uh, where everyone was talking about Louis Theroux. It was, I, I you know, I, what happened was I did a show, uh, I, I'd moved back to the UK, and I think we, the feeling was, well, because the first se- couple of series I think we made, I was based in New York, so and I'd been living in New York anyway, so it made sense to do American stories. Having moved back to London, I thought, well, we, you know, Britain has plenty of weird people. We should be able, so I'm told, we should be able to uh, do a British subject. And we looked around for a suitable candidate. We we dismissed a couple. Uh, for some reason, I think for a while we were going to do Lemmy, the lead singer of um, Iron, no, Motorhead? Motorhead. And Hawkwind, briefly. Anyway, um, and then Jimmy Savile came up as a subject. That was the first one we did. Uh, it rated very well at the time. It was perceived as being sort of insightful and successful, and and then on the back of that, the idea of, I mean, we call them celebrity profiles. More often than not, they involved people who were slightly over the hill or who who's you know whose, in a sense, best years were behind them, um, and it was a weird thing because I felt, in some way, like it was cheating. You know, I think any time you do something involving someone really famous, it's a quite easy way to get ratings, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it can be. No, it can be. So, and, and so, but that, and so I had, I w- in some ways I was quite ambivalent about it um, as an approach, but for good or ill, and some of them I think really hold up, others less so. It's interesting though that you focused on um, that there's a great difference for me as a you know viewer watching some of them now and seeing them at the time that that you by focusing on people whose star had faded that you were looking at outsiders still that you were still looking at people but they had been what was interesting was that they had been insiders and now they were outsiders so that there was a progression into you know the continuation of no, totally of and i i've always really loved stories so where are they now type stories because you have a sort of element of pathos, and plus the people are more available. You know, I mean, it really is that simple. If you go and try and make a program about someone who is absolutely at the top of their game, well, you're not really going to get in, is the bottom line. You won't get anything interesting, I, 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 I think. That's my s- sense. So let's show the clip of um, when Louis met the Hamiltons. In terms of your advice, I mean, you're not just observing at that point, are you? I mean, there's a, there's a relationship. Uh, honestly, this was one where... It was a to- it was a unique experience for me. Uh, I, I I at some point I just kind of almost gave up trying to make a documentary. You know, I I felt I was in too deep, and uh, I really didn't know what my role was. You know, because conventionally as a journalist, you don't really advise someone who's just been accused of rape on what their media strategy <laughs> should be. It breaks several rules. Of journalism, I would have thought. Uh, but there I am, doing it. But it seems very natural for you to be in that. And also, I mean, it's something that you we, you we see again and again in your career and in a very different way with Joe in Drinking to Oblivion that we'll show a clip of later, that that he calls on you for your... Well, I mean, you you give him um, your advice. You, you that, 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 that you're not... That seeing that sort of the 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 way in which there's that link to that early participatory stage in your career, that you're still very much involved with your subjects. You're not just that neutral um, uh, person who's interviewing them. Absolutely, and and in fact, later on, when we stopped sort of staging, um, sort of participation, staging in the sense of planning towards, oh, then you'll get a role in the porn film, or then you will go to the swingers party and take your clothes off. Later on, we, we used to say that the, the participation was the emotional involvement. And I think what you get there as well is a sense that, for me, the, my favorite moments are moments in which I, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny when I say I don't think you should ca- have the banner, right? But it is, qu- I find that quite funny now. And, um, and I think in general, Somehow, um, the most human moments, the moments where I don't really know quite what I'm doing, seem to be the best moments a lot of the time. You know, the bits where I'm not being clever, I'm just sort of uh, looking pained or 
out of place or confused or befuddled or upset, th- those feel like the best moments. You know, a, lo- a lot of it seems to be just, I wouldn't even call it instinct. I think, I think if anything, it speaks to the sense of the, the, uh, our collaboration. Because as much as I say I had lost the plot, and I plainly had, my director, Will, Will, uh, Will Yap, ha- was still focused and uh, maintaining some sort of objectivity.